Everybody right here in Nevada. I love Nevada too. You got Nevada, we have Arizona. How many people are from Arizona? How many people are from Nevada? Not bad, not bad. That's not bad. Six days from now, we are going to win Arizona. We are going to win Nevada. And we are going to win four more years in our great White House. Ah, oh, look at the fake news back there. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. You know, I got a poll this morning. We're one up in Wisconsin, right? No. We were there last night. It was very cold. It was very cold. Uh, but we had a great time, a tremendous crowd, like this, a tremendous crowd. And then tonight, I hear, last night I heard, but this morning, I get a fake poll. So we're one up in a real poll, or even, or whatever, but we'll end up winning it. But I get a poll. ABC Washington Post, they're fakes. Trump, 17 down in Wisconsin. 17. Thank you. Thank you. And they tried it last time four years ago, too, and that didn't work out too well. It's just unbelievable how dishonest the media is. I say it because there they are, just very dishonest people. Very dishonest. The vote for me is a vote for massive middle-class tax cuts, regulation cuts, fair trade, strong borders, and American energy independence. It's what's going to happen. Turn up the mic. It's a vote to support our police, support our military, defend our Second Amendment, which is under siege. Stand up to China and ensure more products are proudly stamped with that beautiful phrase. You know what the phrase is? Made in the USA. We will deliver record prosperity, epic job growth, and a safe vaccine is coming very quickly. You're going to have it momentarily. That eradicates the virus, and we're rounding the turn regardless. You know that. We've got the vaccine. I say regardless. They'll say, well, maybe you don't. We have it. Great companies. And quickly ends the pandemic. Should have never come here from China. They should have never let it out. We'll never forget. All over the world, all over the world. You see what's happening in Europe, all over the world. Normal life will fully resume. That's what we want, right? Normal life. Normal life. And next year will be the greatest economic year in the history of our country. A vote for sleepy Joe Biden, and he is a sleepy guy. I'll tell you what. You know, it's a powerful party. And the party is totally joined with the fake news media, the lamestream media right there. And they're totally joined with the big tech. Big tech. I don't know, Section 230. Does anyone know what Section 230 you do? Section 230, I think, wah. You know, tremendous corruption on behalf of the Biden. Tremendous. Do you know you can't find it anywhere in the media? other than the New York Post, which I'm very proud of, and they endorsed me the other day, too, by the way. But you can't find it anywhere in the media, anywhere. It's not on any of the, it's not in Facebook. They have trending, they always put me trending. They'll give you 25 things that I've done over my life. They make it negative, always negative trending. But sleepy Joe Biden, with all the corruption, all the theft, all the money they took out of these countries, that we end up paying for in spades. You can't find it on big tech, and you can't find it at the Washington Post, the New York Times, because they're crooked, they're dishonest, and we caught them. We caught them just like we caught them spying on our campaign. 
just like we caught them spying on our campaign. We caught him spying. A vote for Biden is a vote for the biggest tax hike in the history of our country. This is the only guy I've ever seen. He's campaigning because he has no clue. He's shot, just so you understand. And I'll say it. Because I've said, hey, I've seen enough. I've seen enough. Here's a guy gets caught, and the media doesn't want to write about it. You know what they call it? Not freedom of the press, suppression of the press. We don't have freedom of the press. You know what? We don't have, you understand that? We don't have freedom of the press. We have suppression of the press. And there's never been a time when it's more obvious than right now. Is that right? Is that right, Charlie? Hi, Dan. He wants crushing regulation. He, by the way, he doesn't want them. He has no idea where he is. They carried him off the stage yesterday. Give me a break. His people grabbed him. Get him off. Get him off. He's trying to make it to the finish line. I mean, it's, it's a, honestly, it's a disgrace. The whole thing is a con job. He should have never been the candidate. And you know what? They have a, they have a corrupt party. And all of this work being done by big tech, and being done by the media, that should be considered a major, massive, billion-dollar campaign contribution, because that's what it is. They slash Medicare and Social Security. He wants to knock out your Medicare, your Social Security, and he wants to abolish a thing called American energy. You see that, right? No fracking. There'll be no fracking, no, for a year he's going, no fracking. He gets the nomination, he goes to Pennsylvania, they tell him, Joe, you have to change. Oh, okay, what do you want me to say? I love fracking, say I love. So he goes from no fracking to I love fracking. A vote for Sleepy Joe Biden is a vote for open borders, offshoring jobs, shredding your Second Amendment, which is totally under siege, by the way. You're so lucky I'm your president. Thank you. What a nice group. By the way, we are substantially up in a state known as Arizona. Do you know about that? Right? Substantially. And I hear we're up in Nevada. Is that right, Michael? We're up in Nevada. We're a little concerned with all those ballots floating around in Nevada. Got a lot of ballots floating around in Nevada. Hey, you know, it's windy as hell out here. You know? I said, is it windy? Should I bring a hat? Because I don't love my hair flopping around. One thing, at least they figured out after three years that it is mine. If it wasn't, I would have found out about it today. You know, should I put on a hat? Should I put it on? Like, oh. Nice hat. I want to know, who has worn this hat before? That's all I want to know. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty nasty. Am I allowed to do it? I'll do it if you want. Otherwise... What a guy. Yes? Better? Nice hat. You know, we're going to change the hat. So we made... America great again. We created the greatest economy in the history of the world. And then we had the plague come in from China. And now we're doing it again. Our numbers are unbelievable. And by the way, you're going to have a very big number. I even say, hold off in your vote until it happens, because a lot of you want to wait till Tuesday anyway. It's going to be a great, great red wave. But you know what? Before that happens, and I don't know what it is, but the Atlanta Fed just predicted a very big number, biggest in the history of our country. You're going to have GDP coming out. It's going to be announced. 
and it's going to be announced probably on the first, maybe a day before the first. And if that number's not big, you don't even have to vote for me, okay? I think it's going to be maybe the biggest number in the history of our country, GDP. That's our big number, right? I'm taking a chance when I say that. You don't even have to vote for me. Okay, who here is voting for Trump? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that's good. And are you waiting till the, uh, tell me, are you waiting till Tuesday to do this, which is, okay. Good if you could get out now. Is anybody sending in a ballot? Are you going in and doing it the old fashioned way? That's what I did. I just did that. But whatever you do, you have to go out and vote. Who here is going to vote for Sleepy Joe Biden? I had a leader of a country call up. He's a very tough leader, tough as hell. They're going to figure it out, maybe. Although they wouldn't, if it was right, if it was good, they were not going to report it. And he said, I hope Biden doesn't win because he's always sleeping. That was an interesting thing. This is a killer. He says, I hope he doesn't win because he's always sleeping. You know, I thought he was being funny. I said, you happen to be right about that. This election is a choice between a Trump super recovery and a Biden depression. You will have a depression the likes of which you haven't seen before, maybe 1929, wants to raise your taxes, put regulations back on. And remember this, get rid of your Second Amendment. Remember this, remember this. Pro-life, anybody pro-life? There's so many, so many different things. This is the single biggest election, in my opinion, and I never thought I'd say it, in the history of our country. This is the biggest the biggest in the history of our country. It's a choice between a Trump boom and a Biden lockdown. He'll close it up. He'll close it up. It's, uh, it's really something. And you know, we talk about the American dream. We had the American dream. It was all coming together. There was gonna be, believe it or not, unity. I was getting called from people, you wouldn't believe it. And then we had this thing come in. It came in and it came in very, un the invisible enemy came in and we went back to work and we saved 2 million people. It was going to be 2.2 million people. We saved maybe more than that. But it's a choice between the American dream and a socialist nightmare. That's what it is. And the reason it's such an important is because, you've heard me say it many times, our country will never be a socialist country. And that's where they want to take us. That's where they want to take us. That's where they want to take us. I'm fighting for the dreams of all Americans, including millions of truly amazing Hispanic Americans. Who's Hispanic? Who's Hispanic? Oh, they're shocked. They don't believe it. You know, the polls with Hispanics are through the roof. They're reporting on it. I said, I never had a problem. I always liked Hispanic, but they're really, they're getting to understand me and the, the incredible progress that we made. So the polls with Hispanic Americans are the highest ever in the history of our country for a Republican, but it could be that we're going to top them. And once we top them, uh, you're going to forget about them because we've really gotten along. The poll, oh, by the way, who saw the debate the other night? Anybody? Anybody watching? You see the poll? 91 to 9. That's, I don't know the word. 91 to 9, that's not bad. I got angry at the media. I thought it should have been better than that. And I felt like Perry Mason because he, he admitted right at the end his last statement. I said, does that mean you don't like oil, Joe? Yeah, uh, well, uh, uh. No, it's Perry Mason. You ever watch, right? Columbo. How about Columbo? It's the same thing. Right at the end, does that mean, oh, did he blow it? He's been, they've been working for five days. And then they had to go to Pennsylvania where fracking's a big deal, right? And how about Texas? You think they like him in Texas? No oil. Think of this. No oil, no gun, Second Amendment. No God, religion. And, he, and then I hear, Trump has a one-point lead in Texas. I don't think so. You know, I used to hear this four years ago all the time. He cannot win the great state of Ohio. He must win. We won by eight points. 
Trump has never done this before. He cannot win Texas under no circumstances. He cannot win Texas. We won, I don't know, by a lot, whatever it was. Remember Utah? We had the guy from Utah. He was a specialist in Utah. He was going to win Utah. He came in third. Even Crooked Hillary beat that guy. Remember he shaved his head? Nice, nice shaved head, nice guy. You remember his name? Yeah, I remember his name. He's one of the others. Another, another rhino. You know, we have, we're against a lot. Jesus. I didn't start. I didn't start. I'm an innocent bystander. Every time that starts, he, he started it. He started. So I always act extremely innocent. They start, all I have to do is mention her name. Crooked, disgraceful, deplorable. Irredeemable. You know, they said deplorable and irredeemable. She, who would have thought her speech would have turned out to be? She came out, she said deplorable, but she also said irredeemable. And to show you what I know, I said, oh, she used the word irredeemable about our people. That's terrible. What a ter but it was deplorable that caught on, right? But whoever her speechwriter is, I don't want him or her. That was a disaster. But I never thought it was going to be that bad. You know, the next day I showed up at a rally. Everybody said, I'm a deplorable. I'm a deplorable. Oh, boy. But she was a lot smarter than Sleepy Joe. But they've got a little bit different kind of a thing going right now. They're more desperate, you know? They're more desperate. They're totally desperate because they have a candidate. I mean, let's not kid ourselves. They took him off a stage yesterday. You saw that, right? They, he called me George. He thought I was George Bush. He called me George. It's unbelievable. You know, I didn't know if I was happy or if I wasn't happy. Because he called me, I mean, you know, and his wife was sitting right next to him and she's looking like, huh, it's on top. Too fun. You could see she was under great, great stress. For the last four years, by the way, these suckers are moving like hell. I think let's go off those, you know? Isn't it nice to have a president that doesn't need a teleprompter, right? They are moving like crazy. They are moving like crazy. And that's okay with me. Thank you. And I love you. I do. I love you. I love you. You know, that's a phrase, and they say it. I think even the fake news would admit it. Nobody's ever heard, we all like Ronald Reagan, but nobody ever said, we love you, we love you, we love you. And, and he wouldn't get crowds like this. If Ronald Reagan, who I consider be top notch, if he came here, He'd have a couple of hundred people legitimately. He'd, have, he'd go into a ballroom, someplace inside, he'd go into a ballroom, and he'd have a two, three hundred people. And that's for, you know, that's what the standard were. We're having 25, 30, 35, 40, 45,000 people. And I'd leave some of these crowds, we were packed in Florida and all these places. And I'd leave some of the crowds and I'd look at that. Look at that. You can't even see the end. You can't even see. If, if they were legitimate, they'd show. They never show it on camera. They never show it on camera. Get the, get the mic turned up. Turn it up. They never, ever show it. They don't like to show it. You know what they do show? Barack Hussein Obama yesterday, they made the mistake. The camera slipped. And they showed his crowd. He had about 20 people there, Barack Hussein. Which was about 10 people more than Sleepy Joe had yesterday. You know, you saw, we were in Pennsylvania, right? You saw that. And we had three rallies, all in Pennsylvania. It was incredible. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people. And Joe was in his basement, and he saw it. And his handlers, much more importantly, saw it. They say, Sleepy Joe, we have to get you out of here. We got to move you in. I mean, it's not looking good because, you know, they put a lid on, you know, a lid for a garbage can. This is for, that's where it comes from. They put a lid on. And he has a lid today again. The guy's got lids every damn day. And then he said, 
He doesn't want to have big crowds, really. Because of COVID. He does, he's such a great citizen. He's such a great guy. Then why did he cheat so much with Hunter? Where's Hunter, by the way? Is Hunter here? Where's Hunter? Where is Hunter? Remember, we did the T-shirt, Where's Hunter? It's sold like a hot Now we have, it's called The Laptop from Hell. The Laptop from Hell, bro. This is the greatest laptop I've ever seen. This thing is gold. It's gold, except for the news that doesn't want to look at it. They refuse to look at it. This is the laptop from hell. It's the worst. Nobody's ever seen anything like it, except for Anthony Weiner. That was a long time. I would rate Anthony's maybe even worse. I don't know. Anthony, that was not good. For the last four years, I've been delivering the Hispanic Americans a message like they haven't heard for a long time. I'm fighting for school choice, right? Right? School choice, big deal. Safe neighborhoods, Hispanic-owned small businesses. We have great, great business people here. I know some of them. I've helped some of them. And our incredible, oh, these people don't know what the hell they're doing. Let me recover my ears for one second. Whoever did this microphone, don't pay them. You know, I have a reputation for not paying, and it's a false reputation. When somebody does a lousy job, like a microphone that's no good, or like teleprompters that fly with the wind, I say, don't pay them. But we love our incredible Hispanic American members of law enforcement, and we have a lot of them here today. We achieved the lowest Hispanic in America, oh, right? The lowest Hispanic American unemployment ever recorded, not even close. And we're getting back to those numbers again. In the last number of months, 11.4 million a record. People were hired. Joe Biden would obliterate every single thing that we've done. He's looking to do that. He's looking to obliterate our tax cuts. He wants to, so we gave tax cuts the biggest in history. He wants to end the tax cuts. He wants to end the child tax credits. $1,000 per child. He wants to end them. Wiping out your small businesses with lockdowns, regulations, gutting your police departments and devastating your families with the massive tax hikes. I said it's the biggest in history. It's not going to happen. You know why it's not going to happen? Because he's not going to win. We can't. We can't have him win. He will attack religious liberty and his running mate, the most liberal member of Congress. She makes Bernie Sanders look like a super conservative, okay? I don't think she's for the people of Arizona or Nevada. And we want to know who are their judicial nominees? Who are they? Who are you going to put on the court? You know, they want to pack the courts, right? How do you like our nominee, Amy? Right? Amy is good. Amy is good. Biden wants to ban charter schools, fund extreme late-term abortion. You know, he wants to fund late-term, even, even beyond late-term. You saw the governor of Virginia, the child is born, and then they make a decision as to execution of the child. You saw that. The governor of Virginia and Biden, Biden totally supports him. And surrender your country to the violent socialist mob. Take a look at Philadelphia last night. Take a look. And we offered to go in. We'd stop that in two minutes. We'd offer to go in. And they said, stand back. Stand back to the police. The police want to do their job. They don't want that to happen. They're good. I think they endorse me, too. Everybody, all police departments endorse me. That's why we are going to win a record share of Hispanic Americans of African Americans, of Asian Americans. We're going to win a historic share of women. Remember last time? He will not get, he will not get women, remember? He will not get women. Well, it didn't work out that way, right? The end of the night, I don't know what happened. He got a lot of women. We did very well with women. You know why? 
Women are very smart. They want security. They want safety. If they're from suburbia, the suburban women, they give me a hard time on suburban women, the people, the fake news. You know what they want? They want security, and they don't want their neighborhood destroyed. And I ended the regulation that would destroy their neighborhood. But I'm not just running against Joe Biden. I'm running against the left-wing mob and the left-wing media, the big tech giants. And I'm also running against the rhinos. Do you know what a rhino is? A rhino may be the lowest form of human life. I actually sort of like the others better than the rhinos. You know why? Wow. That plane's about four days old. You know, we have all brand new equipment, F-35s, everything. We're the envy of the world. You know what? We are the envy. Do you know about that, Dan? We're the envy. Look at that sucker. He's trying to show off to the president. Yeah, that's one of ours. I've got to be sure about it. Got to be careful. And they have nothing but disdain for you and for your values. They lecture you on Open borders. By the way, we don't have borders. They want to have open borders, you know? We're just now completing the wall. The wall will be finished very soon. Mexico will be paying for the wall, by the way. But they lecture you on everything. If a country doesn't have I love that sound. I love it. You don't know what I went through to get those suckers up there. I had to get that money from the Democrats. Look at that. Look, look, look. Oh, look at that. They gave the president a little display. Wow. How about that? How about that? I wonder if the fake news caught that. Did you see that camera? Because they never turned the camera. They don't want to show anything that's good. Wow, that was something, huh? So they were trying to get our attention with the independent over here. And he got my attention, even though he was very high. But that was beautiful. Nobody in the world has the equipment that we have. Listen to that. Oh, I love it. Well, you don't know how hard it is to get Democrats to pay for that stuff. They don't realize how important it is. They support crippling lockdowns while their jobs remain totally exempt. They keep your kids out of school. And you know what they want to teach in school? We don't teach that in school. We've ended that. Their families, they have private tutors. They want to take away your guns, your Second Amendment. Your Second Amendment is so under siege. But we're going to keep your Second Amendment. Nothing's going to be changing. I don't see the people of Arizona or Nevada. About 19% of the people here are from Nevada. Oh, don't worry. I just left Nevada, by the way. I'll be back there very soon. And they all have armed guards. We got to tell these people, don't have armed guards. They don't want you to have guards. From now on, no more armed guards. Let's outlaw armed guards. You like that idea? How about Nancy Pelosi? She goes into San Francisco. And she wants to get her beautiful hair redone. And she ends up with a total Trump supporter as the owner of the beauty parlor. I like that woman. I'm going to go and have my hair done by that woman. She was, she was great. With your vote. Man, is it windy. Are you as windy as it? I think it's from the F-35 that we just saw. With your vote, you can send the wealthy liberal hypocrites a message that they'll never forget. Under Biden's cruel and senseless lockdowns, countless Americans will die, and you know this, from suicide, drugs, deferred medical care. There's so many different things. The cure cannot be worse than the problem itself. And Arizona, you're opened up. But Nevada, get your governor to open up your state, please.
get them to open up your state. Nevada, get them to open. Get them to open it up. If you vote for Biden, your kids will not be in school. He wants to shut it down. He was saying the other day, just say, oh, we'll shut it down. Let me tell you, it is devastating for our nation. And we did just the right thing. We closed it down. We understood the disease. It affects, like, as an example, me. Guess who had it? I had it. I'm sure none of you heard that story. In fact, this rally, usually we set up the rallies. We don't call them rallies anymore. We call them friendly protests because you're allowed to protest, but you're not allowed to go to church. You're not allowed to have dinner with your friends. You can't do anything, right? You can't do anything. So we call everything a protest. This way we have no problem. No, we, ha we have states where you can only protest. You can't do anything else. So we cancel rallies. And I had the idea. I said, wait a minute. Let's just call it a protest. And everybody had. We had a lot of people. We had a good time. With Sleepy Joe, there'd be no graduations, no weddings, no Thanksgiving. They're already talking about no Thanksgiving. And in California, you have a special mask. You cannot, under any circumstances, take it off. You have to eat through the mask. It's a right, right, Charlie. It's it's a very complex mechanism, and they don't realize those germs. They go through it like nothing. They look at you with that contraption and they say, "That's an easy one. I'll go right through with the food." Now, how about California, though? Where you're supposed to eat with the mask, can't take it off. You see people? And boy, you know, when you have spaghetti and meat sauce, that mask is not looking. You walk out, it looks like you got into a fight with Dana White. Where's Dana? You fought one of Dana White. I saw Dana White. Does anybody know who Dana White is? Looks like you got into a fight with one of his fighters, right? Now. You don't have Christmas. You don't have the 4th of July. No, we got to get back to normal, but you got to open up the states. By the way, just so you know, on November 4th, they'll announce your state is open. And on November 4th, all of a sudden, the COVID, 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 you turn on television. We have great numbers. We have some incredible numbers. You know, mortality is way down and way better than Europe and other places. All sorts of things are happening with the, th you know, therapies and therapeutics, cures. I think maybe a cure. I wasn't feeling great. And I was surrounded by doctors. And they gave me something, and the next day, I felt I could take any, I could take this guy in a fight like, no problem. No problem. But Sleepy Joe, I don't think Sleepy Joe would be a good fighter, do you? I asked Dana before. One gentle little touch to the face, and he's down. He's down, he wouldn't get up very quickly either, would he? Joe Biden's only idea, remember he said, I'd like to take him to the back of the barn. Okay. Now, have I ever said that to him, that say, he practices violence. The president practices violence. No, that's right, remember he said, I would take him to the back of, that's like, if you have to fight somebody, that's your dream fight, right? Sleepy Joe. This guy never lives. You know, he never leaves. They had something, because I'm doing three, four of these a day, and you think that's easy, right? The sun is blazing, the wind is going crazy. I did one last night in Michigan. It was about 30 degrees, and it was raining, and the rain was going, you know, sideways, like one of these jobs. But we had an incredible crowd of people, because, you know, they're all great. They're all like us, the same. They love our country. That's what they do. And I brought so many auto plants to Michigan. If I don't win Michigan, that would be uh, that would be a tough one. And look what we've done for this one here. Look, both of you, both of you, for both of your states. The Biden. These guys, yeah, that's right, you can't. Maybe, uh, no, it's probably a rhino is operating the thing. They're having a bad day today. They're having a bad day, but we're having a good day. Thank you. It's all right. Don't worry. Hey, fellas, don't worry about it. It's okay. Don't worry about it. The Biden plan will crush you. 
will crush your family. We will crush the virus, and you will have an economy the likes of which we've never had before, better than last year. You had your best year ever last year. This is going to be better, and you see where we're going. It's a super big. It's a super big. Since the China virus arrived, we've airlifted amounts of material the likes of which nobody has done since the Second World War. It's one of the greatest ever. Nobody has done since the Second World War. We pioneered groundbreaking therapies, reduced the — and I'm telling you, we're down 85 percent. Think of that. Think of that. Down 85 percent. Nobody has any idea what that means, and that's all been done within a short period of time. And, you know, I say it. Uh, so I had it. My wife had it, our great First Lady. Does everybody like our First Lady? She, she made a speech yesterday in Pennsylvania, and they loved her. She made a speech. She's a very elegant woman. She gets hit almost as hard as I do. They go after her. And she's cool, you know? She's very cool. She goes, oh, that's okay. No problem. Me, I want to go get them. I want to go. She goes, that's no problem. That's no problem. She's got a very extreme confidence somehow, you know? She just, that's okay. It's all right. She says, that's their problem, not my problem. How cool is that, right? But she did a great job. She got actually great views. She made a speech in Pennsylvania, and it was fantastic. She's a great first lady. She really... Uh, loves you. She loves our country. But she had it. She got better. I had it. I got better. But Barron had it. Barron. Barron is my young son who happens to be very tall. He's tall. Hi, Barron. How you doing? Barron's 14. When you're six foot five and you're 14, that's pretty tall. Right? I walk out of the helicopter with Barron. Hi, Barron. Are you having a good time? But he's strong, and he goes like the doctor, Sean. He's a great doctor. He goes, he's the White House doctor. Sir, Barron has tested positive, sir. I'm sorry to inform you. I say, oh, that's bad. What does that mean? Positive for what? He goes, for COVID. Or, you know, we have about 30 names. China virus, the plague, whatever you want to call it. The plague from China. We have to be accurate. Barron has tested positive. And I said, that's too bad. Like, two minutes later, I said, how's Barron doing? Oh, it's OK. It's all gone. 99.9%, .9%, right? You know, they have strong immune systems. Much stronger than our immune system. Much, much stronger. I'm working to make the breakthrough treatment that I received, and what we're going to do is we're making it, because I had a thing called Regeneron. We're going to make it available to anybody that needs it free. Free. And I do suggest it. Now, I don't know if it helped me or is it just the power. You know, I made a statement. I made a statement, and they took it very seriously. CNN, fake news, total fake news. And I got better very quickly, and I said, well, I should, because I'm a perfect physical specimen, and I'm very young. They went crazy. He's, he is not young, and he is not a perfect specimen. They went crazy. They went crazy. They, they have no sense of humor whatsoever, do they? Huh? Thanks to our relentless efforts, 97% of all emergency room visits, 97% are for something other than the virus. Think of that. Because we understand it now. We understand it. People are getting better. And you know you're immune. That's why I could jump right there. Well, see those men? I'll kiss the men. I'm not into that, but I will kiss every man there and kiss every woman there, if you don't mind also. They won't catch anything, and you know what? I won't catch, because they say, and until I came along, right, they said, if you have it, you get better. You're immune for life. But when I said, I had it, I got better, they said, you've only got four months. They've changed the whole medical standard. If it was anybody else, it was good for life, right? But with me, they said, I'm now good for four months. Now, I think it's a much longer period, but who the hell knows? We'll, we'll know soon enough. We're on track to deliver 100 million doses of a really great, safe vaccine. And we have some of the greatest companies in the world. They're right at the doorstep. And if I weren't president, if you had Sleepy Joe as your president, it would have taken you four years to have a vaccine. You would have never had a vaccine. What we did with the FDA, they said, sir, we'll need approximately two years. I said, how about one week? 
We moved, we moved up the schedule, and yet very, very safe. We will vanquish the virus and emerge stronger than ever before. Our country will be stronger than ever before. And what I did only because of you and the double state with the double treatment, we spent a lot of money. We now have a new little thing. We have a big board that shows different things. And here's some of the governors talking about the incredible job we did on COVID or the China virus. Take a look. The fact is, every time I've uh, called the president, he's quickly gotten on the line. When we asked to get support for that mercy ship in Southern California, he was able to direct that in real time. What the federal government did, working with states, was a phenomenal accomplishment. Uh, we got 2,000 of these field, field uh, medical sites uh, that are up, almost all operational now in the state, uh, because of his support. And those are the facts. Uh, uh, his team has been on it. I know a team when they're on it, and I know a team when they're not on it. His team is on it. They've been responsive late at night, early in the morning. We are working very well with FEMA Region 2 and with the Army Corps of Engineers, building four field hospitals. Uh, that was a decision the president himself took, and I'm grateful for it. These were just extraordinary efforts and acts of mobilization. And uh, the federal government stepped up. Uh, we needed help and they were there. He said everything uh, that I could have hoped for. Uh, and we had a very long conversation. Uh, and every single thing he said, they followed through on. We've got to have double the number of ventilators that we requested for that area of the state. And in fact, uh, we got them in frankly short order. Have we lost anyone because we didn't have a bed or we didn't have a ventilator or we didn't have Healthcare staff? No. The president was extending support for new swabs. So, uh, conversation, commitment, uh, promise made, promise kept. Now, to be fair, maybe Biden's not telling us because he's forgotten his own plans. Watch Biden's staff quickly swoop in to shuffle him along during a quickie escape the basement trip. To Pennsylvania. Here's the deal. One of the things that that, that is important is that um, keep in mind, although they're going to vote on uh, uh, Barrett, I think today. That was terrifying. What kind of country we're going to be? Four more years of George. Uh, George, uh, he uh, is going to find ourselves in a position where. If uh, Trump gets elected, uh, we're going to be uh, we're going to be in a different world. Fifty six percent of Americans said that they were better off today than they were four years ago, would have been under the Obama Biden administration. So why should people who feel that they are better off today under the Trump administration vote for you? Well, if they think that they probably shouldn't. They think 54 percent of American people were better off economically today than they were in our administration. Well, their memory is not very good, quite frankly. A few moments later. I'm running as a proud Democrat for the Senate. So vote! Vote! Visit iWill.com slash Ohio. I got in trouble when we were running against the senator who was a Mormon. The governor, okay? Well, their memory is not very good, quite frankly. Can't do it. Can't do it. You know, we have a great, great country, but we have a country with tremendous potential, a country that could be greater than ever before. We can't do this to ourselves. We can't. And I personally don't think he's a nice person, but that's okay. I don't think he's a nice guy. If he was a nice guy, I probably wouldn't have put those clips up. But those clips are just a few of many, many, many clips. And this happened over the last couple of days. You can't do it. For instance, if he were here with you today, he'd say, I want to thank the people of Ohio for being with us. No, he's done that seven different times. And once you do that, it's over. 
You just walk off the stage. You could never make a good speech after that. Nobody's going to go home and say, that was a great speech, except for the fact that he called us the wrong state. Joe Biden has surrendered his party to the rage-filled socialists, Marxists, and left-wing extremists. And that's what you're going to have, and you can't let it happen. The Democrats have spent the entire year inciting violence, hatred, and hatred against our police, our police. Without our police, we have very little. Last night, the city of Philadelphia was ransacked by violent mobs, and Biden supported people. These were all Biden supported people. And he wouldn't even call them out. This morning, they said, please call them out. He doesn't want to get involved because he doesn't want to lose the radical left. Stores were looted, police cars were burned, and dozens of officers, great officers, were injured. Biden and Harris stand up, and they stand with the rioters and the vandals. I stand with the heroes of law enforcement. It took generations to build the America we know and love. But if the radical left gains power, it will take them only a short period of time to destroy it. This election day, you must stop the anti-American crazy radicals. They are crazy. That's why I say this is the most important election in the history of our country. I never thought I'd say it because we had a time last four years ago, but they've gone absolutely insane. Joe Biden is a corrupt politician, but big tech will not allow that to be said, and the media will not say it. What he has done is horrible. The money from China, from Ukraine, from Russia, the wife of the mayor of Moscow gave him three and a half million, the son. The son had no job, no nothing. Got three and a half million dollars. They put him on the board of Burisma, $183,000 a month. And I understand a $3 million upfront payment. I think they could have had him for less. China gave him $1.5 billion to manage, even though he's never managed money before. And I asked people on Wall Street, is that common? They said, it's not common even for us. They don't do that. And that was after a meeting that lasted 10 minutes, flew in with his father on Air Force Two, flew back with $1.5 billion to manage from China. And then the big one, and I guess this one maybe got caught, and I give a lot of I give a lot of credit for last night. Tucker Carlson did a great job last night. Because he was willing to call it out. By the way, follow up. Sean Hannity did a phenomenal job. You look at Sean Hannity and Laura did a phenomenal job. They're getting that word out. The great Lou Dobbs, Jesse. We have, you know, we have a lot of good support. But the problem is, we got to have more, because look at all those people up there. Look at them. Every one of them. You know, they turn their camera off if I even talk about this. Think of it. They turn their camera off. If I mention Biden corruption, they turn their camera off. And yet, they'll do stories about me left and right, stuff that's so untrue. No, it's unbelievable. It's pretty unbelievable. It's been a lot of fun being your president. I got impeached over a telephone call. Congratulations on your victory, president of Ukraine. But we had good stick with the Republicans. The Republicans stood by in Congress, 197 to nothing. How about that? That's pretty good. Last night in that hour-long interview, the Biden family business partner revealed the depth and extent of Biden corruption. And you know, if you walk out, your vice president, and your son walks out with hundreds of millions of dollars, and he's got no real capability, I would say that's corrupt. I would say it's corrupt. But Joe got a piece, right? For the big guy, right? They said, we're going to keep 10% for the big guy. They call him the big guy. I don't think so. Joe was personally involved in establishing corrupt business dealings with China. At the same time, he was letting China plunder our jobs and destroy our businesses, our factories, our workers. Another report showed that the executive of a Chinese company 
that paid the Bidens at least $5 million was under surveillance by the U.S. government as a likely Chinese spy. This is all, you know, this is all down, documented. They won't repeat it. Could you imagine if I did this? No, seriously, could you imagine? I had a conversation. Congratulations on your victory. I, I never met the president of the Ukraine. I called him up. One of my great people, thank you very much, said, please call him and congratulate him. I said, who is he? President of Ukraine. And I got impeached. Think of it. And we went through hell for six months, our country. And they spied on my campaign. Before I won, they spied. And after I won, they spied. And let's see what happens to them. Let's all see. And by the way, Obama and Biden knew all about it. Obama and Biden knew all about it. If Biden wins, China wins because China will own the USA. He's going to own it. They're going to own it. President Xi, I know him well. He has not got the same problems that Biden has. He is a very sharp guy, very smart guy, very cunning guy. He'll own the United States. I've charged them billions and billions and billions of dollars in tariffs. I gave $28 billion, thank you very much, China, to our farmers, because they were targeted. When we win, you win, Arizona wins, Nevada wins, and America wins. We're thrilled to be joined tonight by some really great friends of mine, and they're warriors, and they're fighting hard. Your governor, Doug Ducey, he got you opened up. He got you opened up. Where's Doug? Where's Doug? You look good, Doug. He got you opened up. You're open. Thank you very much. And I hear we're doing well, Doug. We're doing good. I'm going to be so angry at you, Doug, if I don't get the I'll call Doug. Doug, how are we doing? Well, he won by about 17 points. I'd say that's not so bad, right? Thank you, Doug. Great job. Great governor. Somebody who's done a fantastic job in the Senate, and she's respected by everybody there, including me. She could fly those planes very easily that we just saw overhead. Senator Martha McSally. Martha McSally. Great, great. So, you know, Martha's opponent wants to get rid of your Second Amendment. I don't think so. You know, if you talk about nothing else, right, he wants to get his whole thing is he wants to get rid of your Second Amendment. They want to take your guns away. You can't let it happen. Will you please win? You got to win, okay? She's tremendous. And you could fly those planes, right? She's the only one in this whole group that can. Congressman Paul Gosar. Congressman, great job. Great job, my warrior. He's a warrior. Thank you. Great job. We're doing okay, right? I hear we're doing good. Thank you. Congressional candidate Daniel Rodemar. Daniel Rodemar. He's a really smart guy, but don't mess with him. He was a professional wrestler. He's a big, you're a big dude. But I hear you're doing well. I hear you're really doing well. That's good. But we're with you 100%. You know that, right? And Jim Marchant. Jim, congratulations. I hear you're doing well, too. You and Daniel. He's doing good, Dan. I think so, right? I hear good. Two winners. Arizona GOP chair, who I've liked right from the beginning, Kelly Ward. Kelly. Now, if we lose, I won't like her anymore. I'm going to say you're fired, Kelly. I'm sorry. But I hear we're doing well, Kelly, right? Really well. Yeah. You have no idea. When you watch this stuff on the fake news, you watch it, you say, oh, man. But the real numbers are we're substantially up. And also, we're up in Nevada. We're worried about the governor because he's a political, he headed the political club. That's some club in Nevada. They send out millions of uh, ballots, you know. They found some in the garbage can with the name Trump on it, military ones. The name Trump was on it. I said, what's that happening? But we got to be careful with the ballots. We do have law enforcement watching in your state. You know that. We have law enforcement. Because it's illegal to do bad things 
Nevada GOP Chair Michael McDonald. Michael. Michael, it's good? Going good, right? That's really good. And we have somebody else who's been a friend of mine for a long time, respected by everybody. Former Nevada Attorney General Adam Laxalt. Thanks, Adam. You are something. You're doing we're doing okay, right? You got the cheating, you're watching the cheaters and all those people that send in the phony ballots and the triple ballot. No, you had Virginia, they sent in five hundred thousand phony applications. They had another one, thousands of ballots were printed. They had one problem. They forgot to put the name President Donald Trump on the ballot. That causes a little problem. History says you don't win too many of those. No, it's very, very dishonest what's happening, but hopefully the courts will protect us. They have to protect us. We had a big win, actually, yesterday in Wisconsin, you know that, where the United States Supreme Court said, I'm sorry, we have an election. You have to get it in. You have to get it in. Some of these people in Nevada, they want to have the election. They want to have the count weeks after November 3rd. So let's all, so let's all wait for the governor to count them up good, and how many is he going to add during that two weeks, right? A man who I've known for a long time. He's an incredible guy. He's a tough guy. He's respected like you wouldn't believe. Made a lot of money with something that he truly loves. UFC President Dana White. He's incredible. This guy, what a job he does. If there was ever a case for loving what you do, he sees these fighters, they want to rip you apart, and he goes up and he likes them a lot, right? They're your friends. Dana's fantastic, and he has done a fantastic job with some of the highest ratings on television. Dana White, UFC. I'm glad he likes me. And another friend of mine who was treated very, very poorly by big tech, but he's smarter than all of them. And he figured this out a long time ago, and he's got a very successful book that just came out. Charlie Kirk. Everybody knows Charlie. Hey, Charlie. Thank you, Charlie. Under my leadership, we achieved the most secure border in U.S. history. We built almost 400 miles. I'll tell you what, the wall. They kept saying, right, the Democrats, we don't need a wall. We need drones, drones, all they wanted. They talked about drones so that we can watch thousands of people pour into our border. We actually, we're all set. We have drones. We have such technology within this wall. We got exactly the wall that the Border Patrol wanted. I negotiated with them, but they didn't want to talk about it. They wanted steel. They wanted concrete inside the steel. They wanted rebar inside the concrete. We got everything. And they wanted wires all over the place to hook up to technology. And the Democrats said, a wall is obsolete. I said, wall will never be obsolete. And you know the other thing that will never be obsolete, right? Walls and wheels, right? Everything else is obsolete about 15 minutes after it's developed. Joe Biden has pledged to have open borders. He even said, maybe we'll take down the wall, one of the biggest projects of the history of our country. His plan would completely obliterate so many of the things that you want. He would do things that you would never have, that you would never accept. He will do things that are so far left that we're not going to talk about him today. He will do things that will destroy our country. This would trigger a tsunami of illegal immigration. They want to have free health care for all, free education for all. Everybody gets a lawyer. That's just what we want is a new lawyer. Everybody. Everybody gets a lawyer. No, we can't have it. We can't have what he has. He's also pledged, and he pledges this strong, but the good news about him, he can pledge, and about five hours later, he will have no idea what the hell he pledged. But Washington Democrats continue to attack our wonderful members of ICE and the Border Patrol, more than half of whom are Hispanic Americans, and many of them are here today. And I'm very proud to receive the endorsement from some of the toughest people on Earth. In fact, I think they could actually go to Dana, and some of them could be nice, good fighters for Dana. National Ice Council, 
the union representing our incredible ICE officers, and a man who's been a friend of mine for a long time. He's the head council president. Just got the endorsement, Chris Crane. Where is Chris? Where is Chris? Where is he? You're looking good, Chris. Could some of your people uh, maybe fight in the UFC? I don't know. What do you think, Dana? Could his people from ICE, they like to fight. I think they could. Dana wants to have them. Give them a tryout. Thank you for all, and thank you for your service, Chris. You do a fantastic job, and the Border Patrol does a fantastic job. These guys, Dana, they go into a nest, and they start swinging. I don't want that job. You don't want it. Nobody up here wants it. They go up, and they And you know what? We have moved out, Chris, thousands and thousands of hardened criminals, horrible criminals, MS-13. We moved them the hell out of our country because of ICE. Killers. As president, I will always stand, I will always stand, Chris, for the heroes of ICE and for Border Patrol. So say everybody, tell everybody hello. Give them a big hello for me. Incredible people. We invested $2.5 trillion in the U.S. military, including nearly $1 billion to build the world's most advanced guided missile. You know where it's being built? Right here in Arizona. We also passed VA Choice and VA Accountability. We killed the leader of ISIS, al-Baghdadi. And we then took out the world's number one terrorist. Soleimani is dead. He's dead. I withdrew from the last administration's disastrous Iran nuclear deal. I recognized the capital of Israel and opened the American embassy in Jerusalem. And I also recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights. And instead of having these horrible, ridiculous, endless wars in the Middle East, we're making peace. You see what's going on? Everyone's gotten together. There's no blood in the sand. And I was nominated for three Nobel Peace Prizes. For all different things, believe it or not. Kosovo, Serbia. You know, we're doing trade deals with Kosovo, Serbia. They're killing each other for many, many years. For decades and decades, they're killing each other. Two countries, they're killing each other. I said, so we're doing a deal with him, deal with him. What, what are we doing? I'm not doing any deals unless they get together. They got to get together. What do we want to have people kill each other for? We made a deal in like about 15 minutes. And they were in the Oval Office hugging and kissing and saying how much they love each other. And it's going to last, believe it or not. I really believe that will last. But you know, it's just so natural. Here we are. They want to make trade with us. More than we want it with them, they want to make trade with us. Everybody wants the United States, especially now. So I said, you know what, we'll make a deal, but you guys have to stop killing each other. Don't be crazy. It's nice. Get along. And they're getting along. They're getting along. A vote for Republicans is a vote for safe communities and a vote for the American dream. A vote for the American dream. And always remember, Abraham Lincoln, the great Abraham Lincoln, was a Republican. We have to bring that up, because most people don't know that. And I can be more presidential than any president that's ever served, with the exception of, perhaps, Abraham Lincoln when he's wearing the hat. You know that. When he's wearing the hat, he's very tough to be. Over the next four years, we will make America into the manufacturing superpower of the world, and we will end our reliance on China once and for all. We'll make it right here in Arizona. We will expand opportunity zones, reduce your taxes, obliterate your regulations like we've done. Nobody has ever done what we've done to regulations, and provide school choice to every parent in America. We will hire more police, increase penalties for assaults on law enforcement, and we will ban deadly sanctuary cities. We will defend religious liberty, free speech, the right to life, and the right to keep 
and bear arms. We will maintain America's unrivaled military might. Nobody has the equipment that we do. We are the envy of the world militarily. Nobody has done. And when I came the first week, I was told by one of the world's most overrated generals, sir, we have no ammunition. Now we have so much ammunition, we don't know what the hell to do with it, OK? All made in the USA. All made in the USA. And we will ensure peace through strength. We will end, sir, right? You like that? Thank you. We will end surprise medical billing, require price transparency, lower drug prices. Look, we took drug prices. Last year was the first year in 52 years where prices went down. I'm very proud of that, but it was just a little bit. But they didn't go up, but they went down first time. But now I've invoked favored nations. We pay more than any other nation in the world by far. The drug companies hate me. Big Pharma hates me. They are spending so much. And what I did is I made it favored nations. We're the most expensive by far in the world. We now go down to the least expensive tied with the least expensive in the world. It'll have a 50, 60, 70, 80 percent reduction in drug prices. And I am not liked very much by those drug companies. So when you see those ads one after another, they make Sleepy Joe look like uh, peanuts compared to the drug companies. Nobody has more money. Nobody's more powerful in terms of lobby. But uh, I had no choice. I had to do it. I have to do what's right. I don't care. I mean, I have to do what's right. We will protect your Social Security and your Medicare, which Joe Biden, you saw that, Joe Biden tried to obliterate. And we will always protect patients with pre-existing conditions. America will land the first woman on the moon in the United States. We'll be the first nation to land an astronaut on Mars. Maybe we'll make that a woman, too. Maybe we should make that a woman, too. What do you think, Michael? He said, make it Nancy Pelosi. That's. Who said that? That's pretty good, I have to say. Oh, stand up, please. Look at this guy. That's pretty good. I didn't say it, I'm just repeating it, you know. They'll say, they say he incites trouble. He loves trouble. No, I don't. Thank you very much. That was very good. Are you a comedian professionally? Or? <laughs> Great. We will stop the radical indoctrination of our students and restore patriotic education, finally, it's already happening, to our schools. We will teach our children to love our country, honor our history, and always respect our great American flag, right? And we will live by the timeless words of our national motto, in God we trust. You know, they tried. They tried to take the word God out of the Pledge of Allegiance. You saw that. They did it once. I said, oh, they made a typo. Then they did it a second time. I said, that's not a typo. And then they had the wrath of the American public against them, and they put it back. But that's where they're coming from. For years, you had a president who apologized for America. Now you have a president who is standing up for America and standing up for the great people of Arizona and Nevada. And Nevada, I got to add those people. They're great. They've been great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you have to stop. I'll start crying. They'll say the president was crying today. The president broke down into tears as they screamed, we love you. From Tombstone to Prescott. From Phoenix. It's lucky I have a good memory, because you can't see this sucker. It's moving like, lucky I have a memory. Ay, 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 would that be bad? 
You are so lucky, you people, that I took you on this journey with me. I say that to all my people. I say it to all my people as the press just absolutely, they're disgusting. I say it to all my people, you're so lucky. Charlie, you're so lucky I took you on this journey. I say it to all my people, where's Hope? Is she here? Hope, where the hell is Hope? Does anyone know Hope? Look at Hope. They're so lucky. Look at that group of people. There's Jared, he's making peace in the Middle East. That's all he cares about is peace in the Middle East. Peace in the Middle East. He's a brilliant guy, I'll tell you. You don't get guys like that, but he's done a great job. And you have, Jared. You have done an incredible job. And he's done it the exact opposite of what they've been doing for 40 years. You know that. Great job. Mesa to Yuma, and from Phoenix to right here in Bullhead. That sucker is moving so much, I see bullhead. I'm trying to go up and, is my head moving up and down like this? You did a great job of anchoring these things, fellas, a great job. You did a great job. This is what modern, and all you have to do is put another two stripes on it, you'll be fine. But we inherit the legacy of American patriots who poured out their heart, sweat, and soul to secure our liberty and to defend our freedom. This great state was settled by some of the toughest men and strongest women ever to walk on Earth. Arizona is where Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday, how about that, became American legends. It's where the great American West became the American dream. And Arizona is the state where generations of pioneers and prospectors, miners, ranchers, cowboys, and cattle hands Marshals and lawmen tamed the frontier, braved the blazing sun that I'm braving today. I'm just as brave as they are. I'm standing up here. I'll be like a lobster tomorrow. And showed the entire world how the West was won. They helped make America into the greatest nation in the history of the world. And the best is yet to come. Proud citizens like you help build this country, and together we are taking back our country. We are taking it back. Don't ever let a bad thing happen on Tuesday. Don't let it happen. We can't let it happen. Can't let it happen. We're so proud of our country, we can't let it happen. You know, when that goes, when it goes, you look at Venezuela, this would be a massive version of Venezuela, and it can happen because the ideology is the same. It can happen. Don't let it happen. We are returning power to you, the American people. And with your help, your devotion, and your drive, we are going to keep on working. We are going to keep on fighting. And we are going to keep on winning, winning, winning. We are one movement, one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. And together with the incredible people of Arizona and Nevada, and Nevada, we'll never forget Nevada. We're going to have a tremendous win. Are we going to win in Nevada, please? Uh, we got a lot of people here. A lot of people, a lot of people from Nevada, too. We have made America powerful again, our military. We have made America wealthy again. We have made America strong again. We have made America proud again. We have made America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you very much. Go out and vote. Go out and vote. Thank you, everybody.